Thank you, President Broadhead, and uh, welcome, class of 2020. Uh, my wife, Susan, and I had the great good fortune to spend time at the Louvre Museum in Paris this summer, a place we'd never been. And what a place it is. Originally built in the 12th century as a fortress, it was expanded and, and made ever more luxurious over time, eventually becoming the palace where French kings lived. After the French Revolution, when those kings were given the heave-ho, um, the magnific this magnificent palace became home to France's most treasured works of art. And now the Louvre has become really one of the most celebrated art museums in the world with over 35,000 objects on display at any one time and almost 10 million visitors a year. Susan and I were two of those 10 million this summer. Now I'm not an art historian, I'm a biologist, and I'm not an art critic, but to be immersed in an ocean of human creativity like this can transform you. I've had the pleasure of such transformative experiences in museums, large and small, all over the world, such as the Shanghai Museum in China, Louisiana in Denmark, the British Museum in London, um, the Metropolitan Museum in New York, um, and even here uh, in the Nasher at Duke. To envelop oneself through art in the genius and ideas of other people, of other cultures, of other times, of other ways of thinking, is both a privilege and a gift. It's a way of deepening our understanding of what it means to be human, of what we all share in common, regardless of where we come from, what language we speak, how we worship, what we look like. So here you are, class of 2020, about to enter the educational equivalent of the Louvre. Duke is one of the great universities of the world, just as the Louvre is one of the world's great museums. And of course, what we offer is not just a dazzling array of art, although I do recommend the Nasher, but an even more dazzling array of opportunities, as President Broadhead has pointed out, to experience new things, to, to encounter new ideas, experiences that will, each in their own way, transform you, deepen your understanding, of what it means to be human, of what we all share in common, regardless of where we come from, regardless of what language we speak, how we worship, or what we look like. At its core, that's the fundamental point of the education we provide at Duke. But this brings to mind something about the time Susan and I spent at the Louvre this, something, uh, this summer, something that I actually have found kind of disconcerting. I didn't notice at first, because we were so absorbed in all the art, but as we were admiring, actually, the famous statue of Venus de Milo, you know the one, you know, no arms, but it's considered a, a classic of, um, you know, epitome, really, of Greek sculpture. And as we were watching that, looking at it, studying it, I, I noticed first one, then another, and then another, and then what seemed like an unending stream of our fellow museum goers doing this. They'd walk up quickly and snap a photo of the statue, and then they'd spin around and snap a selfie with the statue in the background, and then they'd rush right off. Now, this happened so much, person after person doing this, that it seemed like it was like choreography. And, and in fact, for a minute, I thought this, you know, rush up, snap a pic, spin, snap a selfie, rush off, might be part of sort of a flash mob event that was building. But no, there was no flash mob. These were just folks visiting the museum. And then I realized it wasn't just at the Venus that this was happening. At painting after painting, at sculpture after sculpture, the same thing occurred. Rush up, snap a picture, spin, snap a selfie, and you're out of there. Now what I found disconcerting, obviously, was this. The people who were rushing up this way didn't seem to be paying any attention to the art. Um, it was more like they were in a race to collect something. They were simply snapping pictures as quickly as they could without actually seeming to look at what they had just taken a picture of. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm OK with selfies. In fact, I know you guys look great in your own selfies, the ones you've been posting all over social media ever since you were admitted to hashtag Duke 2020. Oh, and Noah, I don't see you out there, but thanks for sending me the selfie you and I took last week at the Peace Search talk. I appreciate it. We look pretty good. Sociologists and cultural anthropologists tell us that selfies are nothing new. It's just a contemporary way of documenting things that we find important, 
occasions that mean something to us. And this is something we humans have been doing ever since the dawn of cave painting. Documenting things, one way or another, is how we recount our experiences. And it's those experiences that help to define who we are. They define us. By documenting and recollecting, recollecting our experiences, we're sort of telling a story about ourselves, a story that helps others to understand us, to understand who we are, how we think, what we like, how we feel, why we're interesting. So here you are on the threshold of your time at Duke, on the verge of a collection of experiences you'll have over the next four years that'll become a very big part of your own story. You'll find many such experiences, as President Broadhead has um, pointed out. You'll find them in your classes, you'll find them all over, experiences that'll deepen your thinking, that can hone your interests. You'll encounter a ton of life-shaping experiences outside the classroom, perhaps while participating in some of the programs we have, Duke Engage, Bass Connection, maybe while competing in a sport or performing in a dance ensemble, or perhaps just in some unplanned conversation with a friend. All of these experiences will be part of your Duke education, and they'll surely be an important part of your own life story. Walking into the Louvre for the first time, Susan and I were thrilled at the prospect of having hours ahead of us in such a treasure trove of human ideas, achievement, and creativity. Walking into Duke for the first time, as you are now, you have the opportunity to be immersed for years in a vastly greater wealth of ideas, achievement, and creativity. This leads me back, however, to those people taking selfies at the Louvre. Because they were so focused on recording the fact that they were there, I think they were missing out on truly being there. Those folks rushing from artwork to artwork, stopping only long enough to snap a picture, were so fixated on documenting their time at the Louvre that they denied themselves the actual experience of all of that magnificent art. Now, I doubt the idea of taking pictures of the art for its own sake was what was motivating these people. If all they wanted was the pictures, they could have bought the museum's catalog. It would have been cheaper, the pictures would have been better. Rather, I think they were driven by a desire to maximize what they could claim they looked at, to expand whatever story they might tell about themselves in their time at the Louvre. No time to look at any one piece, no, no. They have to move right on to get as many pieces as possible in front of themselves. Maybe this is understandable. I don't want to be too hard on those folks. If they thought that they'd never have the occasion to visit the Louvre again, maybe it makes sense that they'd want to take in every last bit while they had the chance. But of course, having pictures to show how much they looked at doesn't mean that they could claim that they had actually seen any of the things that they'd looked at. Now, I don't know if any of those people we saw snapping selfies at high speed in the Louvre will ever have a chance to visit that museum again. Perhaps if they do, they'll slow down the second time around, having realized that they weren't truly there the first time. I do know, however, that you will only go to college once. And you've come into, chosen to come to Duke, a place that has been pointed out will offer you more than you could possibly experience during your time here. There are literally thousands of different classes, thousands, 2,000 classes a semester you could take. There are dozens and dozens of subjects you could major in, hundreds of clubs you could join, countless opportunities for you to get involved in all sorts of things here to pursue your interests. And on top of this, there's the extraordinary wealth of the people you can meet at Duke. Just look at yourselves class of 2020, just look at yourselves. I see just over 1,700 really interesting people in front of me. And I'm sure there's not one of you, not one of you from whom I couldn't learn something interesting and important. And I'm willing to wager that there's not one of you who couldn't learn at least one thing from everybody else in this room. Everything and everyone you experience at Duke could become a meaningful part of your Duke story and of your life story if you let that happen. The challenge is this. You'll be tempted to want to do it all, but of course you can't. Your understandable urge to try to do it all might lead you to, to, to touch too lightly on some things you come across without, allow, without allowing yourself to truly experience them such as the selfie takers were doing at Louvre as they rushed past fabulous works of art without truly seeing them. And of course, it's not really selfies I'm talking about now. 
you'll take a boatload of selfies over the next four years, and that's great. No, the equivalent at Duke of the selfies I saw taken at the Louvre would be something like this, taking a class, not because you're interested in it, but because it seems like an easy way to satisfy a requirement. Or not taking a class that's on a subject you might find interesting, but that you're afraid will be too hard and might lower your GPA. Joining an organization because you think it'll look good on your resume and then never really participating. Or joining so many clubs and organizations that you couldn't possibly meaningfully participate in any one of them. Getting involved in academic or co-curricular programs without asking yourself, how does this fit my Duke education? But instead doing them just because there's some Duke bucket list and you're checking them off. That's a Duke thing to do. Having hundreds of friends on social media but never finding the time to have a conversation over dinner with them. Now, I'm sure that there's no one here who wants to go through Duke in this way, lest the story you, sometime, you someday tell of your time at Duke will seem as incomplete as the story that those selfie takers might be able to tell about their time in the Louvre. And I have no doubt, I am absolutely sure that you know that you will have to make choices to avoid the trap of doing so much that you fail to experience whatever it is you do. But here's my point. How do you make those choices? Right? You just bump around and, and sort of say, that seems interesting, or maybe that, or the first flashy thing that comes to mind. No, I don't think you want to do that. I think you want to be more intentional. And here's the simple answer, the simple um, suggestion I make to help you figure out what you might do or not do. Ask yourself at every turn, what matters to you? What really matters most to you? All of you have things that matter to you. These are the things that brought you to college. These things brought you to Duke. These are your hopes, your ambitions, your dreams. What matters to you may change over the next four years. In fact, it probably will. You'll certainly gain a deeper understanding of what you care about now, and perhaps you'll find new things that you begin to matter to you even more. But when you make choices, and you will have to make choices, about things as specific as what class to take or what club to join or things as big as what you'll do with your Duke education, a good way to find the answer is to ask yourself, how does this square with what matters to me? Here's the thing. If you cultivate the habit of asking yourself, what does matter to me and why does it matter, you'll have no difficulty answering questions like, why do I want to take this class versus that class? Why do I want to be a member of this group versus that group? Why do I want to hang out with this friend and not that one? Why do I believe this and not that? If you always ask yourself what matters most to you and why it matters, then there'll be no danger of you ever finding yourself so occupied with documenting your life story that you ne actually neglect to live that life. Your selfies, real and metaphorical, will always be authentic. You won't just be in the foreground of a picture with something else behind you that you hardly experienced. You will be an essential part of any picture you find yourself in. I began by recounting the experience my wife Susan and I had this summer with the Venus de Milo at the Louvre. Let me end with another classic of Greek antiquity, the Temple of Apollo at Delphi, a place I've never been. But I know this, a few hundred years before the Venus de Milo was sculpted, an unknown stonemason carved into the forecourt of this temple what's probably the best known maxim in Greek philosophy, know thyself. These are good words to live by and have been for the past two and a half thousand years. So perhaps all I'm really saying to you is this, know thyself. <laughs> Thank you and welcome to Duke.